Humans have been traveling across the seven seas for centuries, and although it's an art we've somewhat perfected, it doesn't make it any less terrifying when something goes wrong. Number 5 Salvadoran fisherman Salvador Alvarena had been dubbed the real-life castaway after spending 438 days at sea and miraculously surviving to tell the story. Alvarena's story starts on November 17, 2012 when he embarked on what should have been a two-day fishing trip. Alvarena, equipped with a 25-foot fishing boat, set off from Costa Azul in Mexico, hoping to get a good catch that he could sell when he returned. Despite the storm having rolled in across the horizon, Alvarena decided to make the trip anyway. He was an experienced fisherman and had weathered numerous storms in the past. Alvarena encountered issues soon into his trip, and he told CNN, quote, It wasn't the storm that was the problem, my engine gave out. What was supposed to be a two-day trip quickly turned into seven as the storm threw his small 25-foot boat around, causing him to lose his radio and fishing gear. With all lines of communication down, Alvarena realized he was trapped. All he had to weather the storm was an icebox and a bucket. Alvarena clung to life as the storm slowly subsided, but as the clouds parted, he realized that he had yet another issue. The storm had forced his boat to drift far away from Mexico and into the vast openness of the ocean. Now in survival mode, Alvarena began fishing with his hands, a skill he learned as a child. However, this still wasn't enough to sustain a fully grown man. Despite growing desperate, he captured birds and other creatures, eating them raw and waiting for it to rain for a source of water. Alvarena floated in the ocean for 438 days, surviving only on the bare minimum. He credits his survival to his years of experience and his faith that God would save him. Then after the 438 days, a miracle happened. He spotted mountains. This was his last chance at survival, and Alvarena took it. He got his boat as close as possible and swam the rest of the way. He told CNN, quote, I hit the ground first, my boat hit the ground second. I felt the waves, I felt the sand, I felt the shore. I was so happy that I fainted on the sand. I didn't even care if I died at that point. I was so relieved. I knew at that point I didn't have to eat any more fish if I didn't want to. Unbeknownst to Alvarena, he had landed on the Marshall Islands 6,000 miles west of where he had started. News quickly spread around the world and Salvadorian authorities organized for Alvarena to be transported home as soon as he was well enough. Alvarena now lives a peaceful life in El Salvador and wrote a book about his ordeal called 438 Days. His incredible story has been met with skepticism, although experts from various institutions have come out and said that this was in fact possible. Number 4 Brad Kavanaugh and Deborah Kiley set off in October of 1982 on what should have been an uneventful trip from Maine to Florida. Deborah and Brad, accompanied by three other crew members, were making the trip as the 18-meter yacht they were traveling in had just been bought by someone in Florida. The crew were excited to make the journey, with Deborah telling the Discovery Channel, quote, The weather was beautiful. The boat was fun to steer. It really didn't get much better than it did right then. That was until two days into the six-day trip, a tropical storm came in, capsizing the boat and throwing them into the ocean. Deborah and Brad clambered into a small inflatable dinghy. Other members of the crew followed suit but picked up major injuries along the way. As Deborah looked into the water, she saw hundreds of sharks swimming near them, just waiting for them. Dehydration and starvation soon set in, and other members of the crew were not doing so well and gave in to their injuries, infections, and delirium. Deborah and Brad were the only two left and came up with a plan to get out of there alive. The last two surviving crewmates believed that they were doomed, that was until they saw a Russian cargo ship in the distance. The pair ecstatically jumped up and down, waving their arms at the ship and making as much noise as possible, and thankfully it worked. The pair were rescued by the Russian cargo ship and nursed back to health by the crew members before returning home safely. Deborah commented, quote, I didn't care who these people were or where we were going. I was there and Brad was there and we were alive. Number 3 Poon Lim would earn a place in history books during World War II for surviving 133 days at sea on just a small wooden raft. 
Lin was sent to work on a British passenger freight so that he could escape being drafted into the Chinese army. Up until this point, Lim had lived a privileged life compared to his siblings and was able to attend school thanks to them sending money home. As both he and his family became more aware of the Japanese advance, Lim was sent to work on a freight liner to escape the war. Sadly, this plan didn't work out and on November 23, 1942, the boat that he was traveling on was struck by a German U-boat. Poon Lim was the only survivor of the SS Bin Lamont, leaving behind the 55 other crew members. In the ensuing chaos, Lim grabbed a hold of a life jacket and threw himself into the water, realizing this was his only chance at survival. In a bizarre stroke of luck, just hours after he disembarked, the ship came across a small wooden raft equipped with food, water, chocolate, sugar lumps, flares, two smoke pots, and a flashlight. For Lim, this raft was his saving grace and would be the key to his survival. Lim ate quickly through the supplies and had to resort to fishing with his bare hands and using his life jacket to catch rainwater. In a true testament to his bravery and survival skills, Lim was even able to catch a shark just by using a rope and an old biscuit tin which he'd fashioned into a knife. Days turned into weeks and Lim quickly realized there was no one coming to save him. Numerous army boats and planes passed him but were hesitant to intervene due to the fact that Lim could have been part of an ambush. On April 5, 1943, three fishermen just off the coast of Brazil spotted a raft floating in the ocean. As they looked closer, they saw a man jumping up and down and waving his arms frantically at them. After 133 days at sea, Lim had finally been rescued. After being rescued, Lim spent four weeks in the hospital and had lost a total of 20 pounds, suffering from numerous injuries as well as severe sunburns during the ordeal. Despite what he had gone through, Lim was able to walk unaided into the hospital and recounted his time at the sea in great detail. He holds the record for the longest time that one person has ever spent on a raft, but when he was informed of this, he simply replied, quote, I hope no one will ever have to break that record. Number 2 Married couple, Maurice and Marilyn Bailey, wanted nothing more than to immigrate to New Zealand and start a new peaceful chapter in their lives. In June of 1972, the couple turned their dream into a reality. They sold everything they owned and bought a yacht called the Arlen. Together they planned to sail from Southampton, New England all the way to New Zealand. The first few months of their journey went smoothly and the couple were described as nature lovers so this seemed like the trip of a lifetime for them both. However, things took a dark turn in March of 1973. Just off the coast of the Galapagos Islands, their yacht was hit by a large sperm whale measuring 39 meters causing their boat to sink. Maurice and Marilyn quickly jumped into the small rubber dinghy, thinking that it would be a matter of hours before they would be rescued. Little did they know, they would spend the next 117 days stranded at sea. Luckily, the dinghy was stocked with a few food tents and 20 days of water. But as the days dragged on, the supplies dwindled and the pair had to resort to desperate measures to survive. After 117 days, the couple were finally rescued by Korean fishermen. When they were rescued, the pair had lost three stone each and were badly dehydrated. Following their experience of having to eat sea creatures to survive, the pair became vegetarians, saying, quote, We thought we wouldn't kill any animals or allow any more animals to be killed, so we became vegetarians. I haven't eaten meat since this event. Number 1 29-year-old Stephen Callahan was ready for the trip of a lifetime. Callahan had spent most of his life building boats and studying them and by the age of 29, he was ready for a new challenge. So he built a 6.5 meter boat he called the Napoleon Solo. Callahan's dream was to cross the Atlantic Ocean in the Napoleon Solo, a feat which many warmed him away from. Despite the warnings, Callahan was determined to see his plan through to the end and in 1981 left Newport, Rhode Island headed for England. He navigated the boat all the way to Bermuda alone before Chris Latcham joined him for the rest of his journey to England. After landing in England, the pair went their separate ways and Callahan geared up again to make the journey. He planned to travel down the coast of Spain and Portugal and then up to Antigua. He successfully made the first part of the journey, however after leaving the Canary Islands he encountered trouble. Callahan hadn't anticipated that a ferocious storm would batter his boat for seven days, leaving his boat in extremely bad shape. 
By the end of the storm, his boat was filled with holes after being damaged by what he believes was a whale. The boat quickly filled up with water with every hour that passed, and Callahan realized that he had to move quickly if he wanted to survive. He abandoned the ship and jumped into a six-foot inflatable raft. Somehow, Callahan was able to dive under the water multiple times to retrieve much-needed emergency supplies from his sunken boat. In total, he got a cushion, a sleeping bag, minimal amounts of food, a spear gun, flares, a torch, solar stills that could be used to collect rainwater, and a book called Sea Survival. After being at sea for 76 days, surviving on sea creatures and rainwater, Callahan was finally rescued by fishermen just off the coast of Guadalupe. When he was rescued, he was in bad shape, having lost a third of his body weight, suffering from the effects of dehydration as well as multiple injuries. Despite spending 76 days at sea alone, Callahan was able to survive and even able to draw positives from his experience. After he was released from the hospital, he took off to traveling once again. This time, he traveled through the West Indies and hitched rides from other sailors. Clearly, his experience hadn't put him off of sailing altogether. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to click that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell to keep up to date with all of our future uploads. But I've been Ty Knotts, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.